Thank you for joining us for this practice update. I'm your host, Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. Joining me today, Dr. Benjamin Anderson. Fantastic to have you back again. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about global health in breast cancer, one of your special areas. What do you feel is the most significant advancement in the management of global breast cancer over the past year? Well, breast cancer is the most common cancer among women around the world. Yes. And actually the majority of breast cancer cases and breast cancer deaths are now occurring in low and middle income countries. So this idea of the past that breast cancer is really just a problem of wealthy countries is a fundamental misconception. The issue in breast cancer is how do we develop systems that will effectively get women from an initial point in they, when they first develop symptoms or have, a, have some type of screening test, all the way through to proving that it's cancer and then providing this, this effective treatment. What I would say is that in breast cancer, we're, the area where we're making major improvements is breast cancer breaking down the systems that make this work. We understand a lot about breast cancer because it's so common and so much research has been done but understanding what are the options for how we downstage disease, meaning making diagnoses on average earlier rather than later, understanding what the factors are that is influencing this. One of our uh, studies that just came out from Uganda, what it showed was that women who have very stressful, difficult lives, which we have an index mm -hmm. that yes. helps measure this, those women are more likely to present with advanced stage disease because actually we're trying to get people to come in before the cancer is causing problems. Of course. Before they, if it's, while well, it's a painless lump, that's when they should be mm -hmm. coming in, not when it's an ulcerated tumor. So I think one area that we're making improvements is learning how to downstage disease in effective ways without just the high income, let's screen everyone with mammograms and and but how do we get to the place where mammographic screening is relevant? I think we're making major improvements in diagnosis. So diagnosis means sampling a tumor and getting a pathology reading that both confirms a cancer diagnosis but also tells us about the subtypes. So what, because that's important for de determining treatment. So the, some of the pathology tools that we use are cumbersome. So immunohistochemistry, where we determine ER, PR, and HER2 nu, this is, these tests are really fundamental to what we do, but immunohistochemistry, because it involves antibodies, it's, it's tricky and, and it can vary, the quality yes. of it can vary. So how that's done is, is, is uh, challenging, especially in a limited resource environment. So our, our pathologist, the, um, Dan Milner, uh, from uh, the uh, American, Society of Clinical Pathologists yes. has been leading efforts to both set up laboratories but also study alternate methods. So could we use PCR in an affordable way sure. to determine these tumors markers mm -hmm. in ways that still are accurate? And could this be done with fine needle aspiration, which would be very practical and quick? I think we're making advances in terms of how to make same-day diagnoses that in a limited resource environment, the idea that she can come back next week, sure. she can't come back right. next week if it took her eight hours exactly. to get there. And so I think we're gonna see major improvements there. I also think the, the, the systemic therapies, we're making a lot of advances. And so some of the new drugs, PARP inhibitors, that in addition to the therapies that we've been mm -hmm. using, I think this is going to make improvements. And so that, of course, is very exciting. But I would say equally exciting is the development of platforms where we can give the standard therapies that already work. Yes. As an example, you know, estrogen receptor testing, there was a study some years ago in Egypt, and the question was how many women were estrogen receptor positive. So there was ER positive, ER negative. The biggest group was ER unknown. And, and when you think about, well, gosh, tamoxifen is a sure. pill that could be prescribed at the primary care level, starting to break down the, that and solving the problems, the easier problems, I think we're going to see a lot of advances in this area in the most underserved communities. Excellent. Well, thank you for highlighting not just the advancements now, but a glimpse at the future. We appreciate that.
Thank you. And um, to our viewers, thank you again for joining us for this practice update. I'm Dr. Hafizullah. Please join us again soon.